Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. It is a horrible day outside and I am loving it. It's finally happening. The rain has come, the wind has come. It's everything I've been dreaming of. It's not everything that Sienna has been dreaming of. She's sitting right here and she's so upset because she hates going out in weather like this. I had to force her out to do the toilet this morning and she is just refusing to go on her walk or anything. But I'm happy with it at least. It's put me in such a cozy mood. I've been lighting all the candles, been putting all the little lights on in the living room at night time to cozy up with my hot water bottle. And so that's why I'm going to talk about some things that I think are perfect to watch in weather like this. Cozy TV shows and films that I will be running to in weather like this to just make me feel like I'm getting a warm hug and there's a soft blanket around me and I'm excited to talk about them. The majority of the things that I've listed are TV shows but I have a couple of films that I'm gonna talk about. I didn't want to talk about things that are recommended more often so like Gilmore Girls for example is the TV show that everyone recommends for like autumn time coming up and don't get me wrong I love Gilmore Girls but everyone knows about it so I'm not gonna harp on about that. So I've tried to stick with things that are not not popular but that I hear are recommended a bit less. So the first film I'm gonna talk about is actually one I only just watched last night. It is fresh in my memory and I loved it so much that it was kind of the thing that spurred me on to film this video. It is Emily, which came out in 2022, starring Emma Mackey as Emily Bronte, who famously wrote Wuthering Heights. It's semi-biographical, and I say that because the writer-director did take liberties with history in the film. So one of the main plot lines in the film is a romance between Emily and another character, which is something that did not happen in reality, or at least there's no evidence of it happening. There are other historical inaccuracies kind of littered through. For example, it's implied at the end of the film that Emily's death inspired her sister Charlotte to start writing again. Charlotte who famously wrote Jane Eyre but in reality Jane Eyre was published a year before Wuthering Heights was published. That being said because it is so obviously a fictionalized version of events it's not claiming that this is what happened in real life and all these choices were made to add to the cinematic experience. They weren't just there for the sake of it being there and I just thought it was so interesting because after I watched the film I looked up some stuff about Emily Bronte and apparently she's the least well known of the Bronte sisters. She kept to herself quite a bit and apparently a lot of what is known about her is based off her older sister Charlotte's writings and observations about her sister so that's undoubtedly coming from a biased opinion. I decided to watch this last night because I started reading Wuthering Heights yesterday. I'm about 75 pages through I think. I've been wanting to watch this film for a while and kind of starting Wuthering Heights yesterday just put me in the mood to watch it and I'm so glad that I decided to watch it whilst reading the book. I feel like it really immersed me in the world that Emily was writing in, how she was surrounded by all this beautiful nature and how that was incorporated into her writing. And the film has a lot of scenes in it that are directly referencing scenes from Wuthering Heights which gives the film this overall gothic romantic atmosphere that Wuthering Heights is so praised for. It is shot so beautifully but the score as well is so stunning and the two aspects of the film work together so seamlessly to immerse the viewer into this world of the moors and you just completely lose yourself in it. Emma Mackey as Emily Bronte is incredible. She's an incredible actress anyway, but she was incredible at embodying so many different aspects of this interesting writer. She made her both strange and endearing, smart and childlike through her obvious love of imagination and make-believe and also she captured a sort of dry weird humour that I've been getting from reading Wuthering Heights which I thought was 
incredibly acted by her. I also thought the romance in the film was stunning. I didn't realise how fictionalised the film was going to be, so it came as a bit of a surprise that they focused on this romance so heavily, but I absolutely loved it and I did not expect to get so sucked into the tension between these two characters. But I think you can clearly see that it was shot with a female gaze, especially during the love scenes when there's lots of close-up shots of small touches and hands and the focusing on the undressing of each other as a form of foreplay. It was just absolutely beautiful to watch and it really made me fall in love with this relationship. I just highly recommend this film if you haven't seen it especially if it's a rainy, windy afternoon or evening and you just want to lose yourself in this world. If you like Wuthering Heights or you like Emily Bronte's poetry, I think it did a really good job of capturing the vibe, the general Emily Bronte vibe. The second film I'm going to be talking about is Knives Out. Knives Out is an incredible murder mystery whodunit with an all-star ensemble cast and it follows famed detective Benoit Blanc as he investigates the death of a famous author called Harlan Thromby. Blanc works with Thromby's nurse, Marta, throughout the film to try and unravel the complicated politics and motives of Thromby's extended family. But it's soon discovered by the viewer that Marta is keeping some secrets to herself too. This film is such a fun whodunit which has a number of cosy set pieces throughout, most prominently the massive house where much of the film is set. The house is just the epitome of cosy with like lots of dark woods and big fireplaces. It's very like old money feeling, you know? It plays quite a significant part of the film as well. It's got lots of cool passageways. Overall, the way the mystery plays out is amazing. I didn't see the end coming at all, but the film does such a good job at giving you enough information throughout the film to make you believe that you could figure out what is actually happening before pulling the rug out from under you. The cast is incredible, there's some really big names in there and the chemistry between all the characters is just like palpable, especially between Blanc and Marta, but I think Chris Evans gives a really standout performance as well. It focuses on themes of class and race through the family's treatment of Marta and this conflict really slowly builds throughout the film before culminating in an extremely satisfying conclusion. The last shot of this film really stuck with me. I just think that one shot, the final shot, just summed up what the film was trying to say so well for me. So yeah, if you like a murder mystery, this is a great cosy film to kind of settle into for an afternoon. I'm going to get into some television series now and I'm going to start off by talking about Twin Peaks, which I have not watched all of. I only started Twin Peaks last month when I was back home visiting my family. Twin Peaks, the original series, is on Paramount Plus through Amazon, which my mum has, but I don't have that and I don't know my mum's password and I need to ask her for it <laughs> because I've come back down and I really want to keep watching it and I can. I got near the end of season one before I had to leave and I am itching to get back into it. So Twin Peaks is a TV series that follows an FBI agent, Dale Cooper, who arrives in the mysterious town of Twin Peaks. Um, to investigate the murder of 17 year old girl Laura Palmer. I'm including Twin Peaks on this list even though I haven't finished it because it is truly one of the coziest shows I have ever watched in my life. From the moment the opening titles begin right through to the end of every episode it's just like stepping into this weird sublime world with woods and rain and drama and mystery. I'm like, I'm no stranger to watching weird things. I like a weird film, television series, books, but this is truly bonkers. <laughs> it plays with genre in such a unique way because it like goes from horror to romance to mystery to comedy to drama so rapidly that it's kind of like a dizzying experience. It'll jump from each genre from scene to scene. There's like continuous music throughout that 
also changes genre so if you're like in a comedy scene it's got this kind of like jazzy feel in the background and then the next scene is meant to be ominous and the music goes immediately ominous it just like doesn't let up it just like throws 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 at you it won't be to everyone's taste but i absolutely loved it so much i think it just added to the charm and intrigue of the story and it gave me a really nostalgic feeling even though I did not watch this when I was younger at all. It just is one of those things, you know, like if you have no prior connection with something, but it still gives you that feeling where you're just like, yeah, I'm nostalgic for this. It's that. I mentioned before the opening titles and <laughs> honestly, just if you've not seen it, just go on YouTube, the opening title f titles for Twin Peaks and you will understand exactly what I mean. Like the music, sweeps you away on this journey <laughs> it's so still and calm and eerie and relaxing but tense how can it be all of these things at once i don't know the visuals of the opening titles are just like scenery and sawmills and forests it shouldn't be that good but it is the characters are so interesting cooper has my heart and soul he had it from the beginning from i first saw him i've never encountered a main character on a tv show like him he is funny and so weird <laughs> and unashamedly so he just like embraces everything that goes on around him and it just really endears me to him if you want high like melodrama mystery supernatural a feeling of not knowing what's going on ever but being unable to stop watching this is completely the show for you i can't wait to keep watching it and finding out finally who killed laura palmer because i'm probably one of the few people in this world who doesn't know the next show i'm going to talk about is the haunting of Bly manor this is a horror TV show, but I'm recommending it as a cozy watch because in my opinion, it's more of a story about love than a straight up horror story. It does have frightening bits, but if you compare it to Mike Flanagan's other shows like Hunting of Hill House or Midnight Mass, it's not as scary as them. So it follows our main character, Danny, who arrives at Bly Manor to work as a governess for two parentless children. It's a really great series if you're a horror fan and if you're not a horror fan. I think it appeals to quite a range of viewers and the reason why I think it's a cozy watch. Take The Haunting of Hill House. I love that show too but I did not want to go to Hill House. I did not want to hang out with the family really. I loved the story, I loved the characters but it wasn't inviting whereas Bly Manor, the characters and their relationships with each other and the house all just makes you watch it and want to go to Bly Manor and hang out with them and be friends with them and have drinks with them. It's got this really warm welcoming vibe about it and like I said it's more of a love story to me than a horror and love is just present through all of the relationships in the show. Even in the ghost story that runs through it, love is the driving force of it all. The main love story is a beautiful queer romance that I think is just absolutely stunning and tragic and one of the best I've seen on screen and the acting is amazing. I don't think I would feel the same level of adoration I do for the show of it. The characters were played by different people. It's both uplifting and tragic, highlighting the ups and downs of love and I think a lot of the criticism that I did get when it came out was it was too heavily thrown in your face this whole idea of love and the themes going through it. It was just too sickly sweet for some people which is fair enough but for me it just hit so right. And because it is a horror, this would be a really good cozy watch leading up to Halloween if you're looking for something that's maybe not as traditionally scary. Next TV show I'm going to talk about is a cartoon and it's Over the Garden Wall. This cartoon follows two brothers, Wurt and Greg, who find themselves lost in this strange and weird world called the unknown on Halloween night. As they try to make their way back home, they make friends with a bluebird named Beatrice and each episode they interact with 
different characters in the world and face their worst fears along the way. This show is so incredible, it's so whimsical and magical. The art style, the animation, the music all work seamlessly together to make you feel as if you've just stepped straight into this American gothic fairy tale. I'm not someone who watches a lot of cartoons, not that I'm opposed to it, but this had me enraptured from the get-go. Each episode is only 10 minutes long and there's only 10 episodes so you can easily watch this in an hour and a half and make it kind of a short film which me and my husband do every Halloween now and honestly it is genuinely terrifying. Some of the episodes in the show stick with you for such a long time after because of the images and ideas that they plant seeds in your head about. Also they sometimes sing songs and every single song is perfection. I just think it's the perfect little show especially for Halloween. It just is so comforting. It's just like a big cup of tea or a big blanket wrapped up around you. It's just warm. It's all just warm. The next show I'm going to talk about is Pride and Prejudice, the 1995 TV series by the BBC. Pride and Prejudice is based off of the novel by the same name by Jane Austen and it follows the tumultuous love story between Elizabeth Bennet and Mr Darcy as they navigate a series of misconceptions and miscommunications in Regency England. There's a lot of debate over which adaptation of Pride and Prejudice is the best and the 1995 one is <laughs> enough said. This is my go-to, closely followed by Lizzie Bennet Diaries which was an adaptation on YouTube and is incredible and it's a modern adaptation. I'm not going to talk about it right now because that's not what this video is about but I love that too. But for a classic accurate adaptation of Pride and Prejudice that is cozy and warming and welcoming, watch the 1995 version. Jennifer Ely and Colin Firth are my Elizabeth Bennet and Mr Darcy. They are it for me. Nothing will ever change it. I pff, I don't think. I think this does hold nostalgia value for me because I did grow up in a house that would watch this every year as soon as the rain and wind kicked in and I did re-watch it recently as well actually after watching the Barbie movie because it's referenced in there. If you know, you know. That was one of my favourite parts of the Barbie movie. I thought it was so funny. This adaptation it captures the essence of the book so well, particularly the romance between Elizabeth and Darcy. My issue with the film adaptation with Keira Knightley in it is it feels less Austen and more Bronte to me. It feels like they tried to make it too dramatic and romantic. I think the beautiful thing about the romance between Elizabeth and Darcy is it's so passionate but not in an over-the-top way. The passion is supposed to be seen through small glances and longing looks and quick banter between them. It's not about running through moors. It's not Wuthering Heights, you know what I mean? And I think the 1995 adaptation highlights that so well. Jennifer Ely and Colin Firth are obviously very attractive people but their eyes in particular, both of their eyes are just so gorgeous and I feel like in the adaptation the camera really lingers on that, it holds on their faces when they're looking at each other. You can see the growing love that's like bubbling up to the surface beneath their eyes and it just makes it so much more satisfying when they get together for me. It makes the romantic tension so much better. But th this is this is just my opinion. It's a mini series, so I think there's six episodes each an hour long. I think especially for like a sick day, it's such a good show to kind of just cuddle up on the sofa and switch on and just feel sorry for yourself and wish that you were there. It'll just make you feel good and give you that nice feeling of falling in love. The last show I'm going to talk about is a bit different. I realised I've kind of hit on atmospheric mysteries, horror, history, but they're all kind of more drama leaning. This recommendation is a sitcom and it's Cheers. Cheers is a 1980s sitcom so it's a bit older and it follows an ensemble cast who come from various walks of life whose lives all intersect at 
a really cozy bar in Boston called Cheers. The main reason I'm recommending this is for the setting. The series is mainly set in the bar, this low lit cozy bar which is so inviting and welcoming and makes you want to walk in there and have a drink with all of these people. It's got a great cast of characters. The earlier seasons focuses a lot on the drama between Sam and Diane and this romantic tension of a will they won't they relationship. They were essentially Ross and Rachel from Friends before Ross and Rachel from Friends existed and Woody Harrelson comes in as a main character a few seasons in and he plays this really happy naive like country bumpkin character which is so different from the stereotypical character he plays these days. It's genuinely funny, there's a reason it's, it's a classic sitcom and it captures that kind of warm fine family feeling that I look for in a sitcom. The romantic tension between Sam and Diane is great like I said and it's just a really good show because it's a sitcom, short episodes, you can whack it on in the background if you're doing something boring and just have these familiar voices playing in the background like it feels like your friends are about. It's really really nice and a bit different to stick on during these months if you're looking for something light, more lighthearted, you know. I hope maybe you'll want to check out some of these things if you haven't already. Like I said, I tried to go for some lesser talked about stuff, some older stuff and bring that back. I myself will be continuing to watch Twin Peaks, hopefully. And I hope wherever you are, you've got some lovely cozy weather and that you have a wonderful week coming up. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!